Hello everybody, we're going to be starting our new unit on the Industrial Revolution. Um, you just finished your test on the French Revolution, so now we're going to another revolution. Um, that hence deals with industrial. So, what time period are we talking about here? So, kind of in that same general realm as the Enlightenment, as the American Revolution, the French Revolution. You see the time frame, 1760 to 1820, 1840 in that region. So again, American Revolution took place in the 1770s, 1780, and then you have French Revolution, basically 1790s, rise of Napoleon. Um, so now we have the Industrial Revolution, kind of all, in, it really all overlaps in terms of how the world was changing. Um, so this is the first Industrial Revolution. Um, and so next year in U.S. history, we'll, we'll talk about the second Industrial Revolution, which will happen in the United States. First one's going to happen in Europe. All right, so just some things. You should be getting a new set of guided notes from me, so make sure if you're testing, you grab that. Um, so what are some of your unit goals, things that we'll be talking about? First of all, you know, what is what is industrialization, and how did this change the following? How did it change government? How did it change economics? And how did it so change the, sh the social components around the world, how people interact? Um, so keep that in mind, those three things, uh, you know, those themes as we go forward. Um, what new technologies were developed that made this transition possible, this change possible? And then what were the negative effects of industrialization? So again, keep that in mind. Now, we all can kind of relate to this um, in terms of, uh, you know, I really don't care what generation you grow up in. Here, let me do this. Make this bigger. Um, I don't care what generation you grow up in. Every era deals with change. Um, te um, technology changes. Um, so you have like those old school factories where things were powered by water and then things transitioned to coal, okay? So this whole idea of this picture off to the left that machines are going to take over the world. Machines are going to take over all jobs and we're not going to have any more jobs anymore. Um, or you think of like modern day examples and how, um, you know, back in the day everybody had a telephone uh, in their house. Oh, no, well, there goes all the telephone people who work for uh, these different telephone companies, AT&T, &T, they're going to go out of business because now cell phones are going to take over and yada, yada, yada. Guys, no. Look at this. Apps were created now. So now you, so although, yes, some phones and stuff, some phone companies where everybody in every household had a phone, but now you need app makers. Um, so this, is, this developed a new age of creating new style jobs. Then you have over here, you have, you know, uh, Uber uh, with cars. Now, people have been, you know, driving people around and getting money by driving for Uber or for Lyft. And then now you have these, these you see this thing on this picture here. Uh, some cities have already started to pilot this in Uber and Lyft has started to pilot this where you have driverless Ubers, where there is no driver. It's basically a basic computer that picks you up. Oh, no, no jobs for anybody. You know, the computer's going to take over the world. So the same arguments that we're making they were making during this time where machines are going to take over the world. Uh, is there some merit to it? I guess. But you're going to start seeing a new um, invention and new adaption to new, to new styles of jobs. Again, you need, you need mechanics. Okay? So that, the, that, that creates jobs. For Uber, for instance, you need people to make the car systems that deal with this type of technology. Uh, phones. You need app makers. Um, so... You know, think about that in terms of, you know, what your job is, is going to look like in the next 15, 20 years. How is the world going to change? Um, what new jobs do you think could be created uh, off of those uh, new changes? Um, so every, every, every era deals with that. Uh, the fear of computerization and with schools. Like, will someday schools be obsolete? Uh, I guess, maybe. But you still need teachers. Um, to teach, you might just you might just go to more of an online format. Who knows? So again, kind of just keep those things in mind. Um, you know, as we move forward, the same arguments are, have always been made. All right. So, um, what's the historical the historical significance of the Industrial Revolution? Um, so the Industrial Revolution, and we'll get into what that means here in a minute. But the Industrial Revolution changed human life drastically. Um, it was more was created, guys, in the past 250 years. So from like the 1700s that we talked about to today, 2021, um, 
more has been created over the past 250 years than the previous 2,500 years known in human history. Again, science, technology, what we know, knowledge, has grown so drastically over the last 250 years that we've made more things now than at any point in human history combined. So I think that's kind of interesting um, if you really think about it that way. All right, so Europe in the 17 and 1800s. Europe was going through changes uh, unlike any other point in human history. So things we talked about already, the Enlightenment, new ideas and ways of thinking. You spread science, spread government, uh, how spread in science and government that inspired groups of people to rethink old ways of doing things. Uh, then you have the French Revolution, as we already talked. Then you have the Industrial Revolution. So throughout all these things that we've been talking about so far, the first two months of school, Enlightenment, Scientific Revolution, American Revolution, French Revolution, all these things are all happening at the exact same time. Changes in technology, changes in science, ways of thinking, changes in government, changes in human rights are all beginning to change. We have this new way of thinking versus the old way of thinking, and they're clashing. Think about French Revolution. You have the king and you know his absolute rule against the new age, third estate. They want change. American Revolution, the king of Great Britain, thinking that he could impose his will upon the colonists, and they fight back. So you have all these things beginning to change. All right, so, okay, so what is the Industrial Revolution? What does this mean? So this picture kind of says it all. When you, think of, when you think of the Industrial Revolution, think of factories. Think of mass production. Think of making goods with machines. So, then, so again, in the definition, copy this, you've got to notes, the Industrial Revolution refers to the great, to the greatly increased output of machine-made goods. So clothes, blankets, food, um, engine types of machines, those are all going to be made by machine. So before all those things, food, let's say butter, ice cream, um, whatever, think about clothes, blankets, uh, all those things were once made by hand. Think about how long it would take somebody to make clothing, to make a blanket. Well, now a machine can make it, boom, like that. So now you're starting to mass produce these things. Now, this is going to start in England. The Industrial Revolution starts in England. This is the first country to do it. And over the course of the unit, we'll talk about why. Why England? Why was this the epicenter of the Industrial Revolution? Um, so hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. So when you think of Industrial Revolution, think of factory. Think of mass production. Think of machines making goods. Um, so as I said, um, the Industrial Revolution, machines were invented which replaced human labor. So this was the fear. Yeah, and this was, this was true. Uh, you know, you have machines on the farm. So some farmers are going to lose their jobs. Um, some factory workers are going to lose their jobs because machines are going to make things more efficient. So instead of something taking days to make, now it's going to take much shorter. Um, so new energy sources were developed to power, to power these new machinery. So for a long time, you needed water. So, be, so before 1825, you needed the main water source for power, the main source for power was water. Um, you need water to get the water wheel going that could power the plant. Well, as we start to develop new energy sources and learn more about energy, we start realizing that you, you, know, you could use more than water. You, need, you can use gas, you can use coal uh, and kerosene uh, to help power things. And then from there, you invent engines. And engines will take over like the water wheel. Uh, again, making things more efficient. Um, Oops, I'm sorry. I think I already went over that. Okay, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking into some of the vocabulary that we'll be talking about. So you, you can complete this um, page, um, I guess, to start. Very similar to what we did in our last digital notebook. Um, you're going to research these terms. You know, what is enclosure movement? What is steam engine? What is Bessemer process? What is factory? So here's the thing, though. I, I kind of did take this to be a big deal in the last one. Do not copy and paste things uh, into here. Uh, if I see it, I'm going to just erase it. Um, so don't do that because ultimately I don't care what Google says the answer is. I, want, I, I care about what you, if you're able to understand what it means. So you're going to do that and then a picture for each. So again, the, I would say out of all these, especially you're probably going to have a harder time with enclosure movement. You might need to do a little more digging on that, a little more research to truly understand what that means. But again, do not copy and paste. If I see something copy and pasted, I'm going to erase it and then find a picture. So that is good for today. Um, so this is going to be, your, I guess, your first start on your assignment is this. All right, adios. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.